Hello everyone, I'm Mayor Darcy Paul and I want to welcome you to the 2021 State of the City Address for the City of Cupertino. I'd like to start this address by thanking some former, immediately former rather, council members Stephen Scharf and Rod Sinks for their service to our community. This year we welcome our new council members Kitty Moore and Hung Wei. In the second half of their current term are Vice Mayor Liang Chao and Council Member John Willie. I would also like to acknowledge the tireless and consistent efforts of our city manager, Deb Fung, who marked her first full year with Cupertino while handling our, our city's response to the pandemic mid-stride back in the summer. I'm also grateful that all of you watching have taken the time to be here with us virtually. This will not be a traditional address as this is not an ordinary time. Normally, a couple hundred community members gather to participate in our annual custom. But tonight, I am delivering this address by video, abiding by the state and county stay-at-home orders. I hope you are all staying safe as well. 2020 was a difficult year for us all, for us as individuals, for us as a community, and for us as a country. But I believe that challenges are often opportunities in disguise. They push us to find our better angels and to help us get to a better place. And I can find proof of that in our own community. The rate of COVID-19 infections in Cupertino since the start of the pandemic has been and remains the lowest in our county. That is thanks to all of you who are doing your part to protect yourselves and others. As our city banners say, we're in this together. Please continue to wear face coverings, physically distance, and wash your hands often. I'm proud to have supported and voted for a citywide face coverings order early in the pandemic. We were one of the first two cities to bring this to a, a council agenda in the county. Milpitas did consider it first, a day before our meeting, but we agendized it first. It seems prescient now, but at the time, it was actually pretty controversial. I want to thank my fellow council members and city manager for having the foresight, intelligence, and courage to enact this policy. As we now all realize, wearing a mask, following social distancing protocols, and being steadfast about personal hygiene, and in particular, washing your hands with soap and water have been the best way to keep yourself and others safe from COVID-19. Uh, I bring my mask everywhere. We're socially distancing here in Community Hall where none of us have been since March 17th of last year. And personally, I found myself fortunate enough to be able to call for the provision and delivery of personal protective equipment early on during these times. A relative of mine, a physician at one of our local hospitals reached out very late one Saturday, extremely worried about the very sudden uptick in patients. Now, I'm not sure about you, but for me, a panicked relative reaching out in the middle of the night on a weekend is singularly unusual, but I knew immediately what the stakes were as she described firsthand the onset of this atmosphere confronting the healthcare industry. I listened and I outreached to the best contacts that I have in the political sphere and in the private sector. And I'm proud to say that this community responded. The state of California responded. Our local businesses responded. Large and small, we pulled together to ensure the provision of PPE and particularly suitable masks for our medical personnel, first responders, and those most in need of this protective equipment. And I'm so very proud of our volunteer and not-for-profit community for responding as well. I worked with our city manager and our director of public works to ensure that at City Hall, Cupertino had available places for members of the public to donate PPE and masks. Thousands upon thousands of such donations came in. Community members made productive use of their time uh, upon that. Uh, by making masks and coordinating efforts to do so among their friends and neighbors. You, as a community, stepped up and we were able to give our local hospitals the equivalent of a few truckloads of PPE. I am grateful for that. Thank you all. Cupertino responded with foresight and care 
in other ways to the pandemic as well. On the technical front, when the first stay-at-home orders went into effect, our city services seamlessly transitioned to a virtual environment. No hiccups and no turning off the lights. How is this possible? Well, our IT department had been preparing for years for an earthquake that would knock out power, close roads, and make it necessary for staff to work remotely. I don't believe they could have foreseen this pandemic, but it turns out their efforts worked for this natural disaster as well. This couldn't have happened without the vision and persistence of our Chief Technology Officer, Bill Mitchell. Bill, thank you for your service to the city and our community. We are lucky to have you on the team. For those who may not have seen it, Bill and his efforts were actually highlighted by Forbes magazine. That in itself is a testament to what he, his department, and the community have accomplished. For ongoing updates regarding the pandemic, our response to it and how Cupertino's efforts are coordinating with broader efforts, I encourage you all to visit cupertino.org forward slash coronavirus and sign up for notifications. Since the beginning of this pandemic, the city has updated this page with the latest information and sent out regular reports to keep residents apprised of what's going on. The pandemic has also exacerbated the conditions for those experiencing homelessness in and around Cupertino. In response, the city partnered with the nonprofit agency, Abode Services, and the County of Santa Clara to support the encampment on Wolf Road at Interstate 280, prioritizing a pathway to housing for each participant. Starting in July 2020 and continuing into 2021, each response agency has maintained consistent outreach and to those at the encampment. As a part of the ongoing outreach and engagement at Wolf Road and Interstate 280, the County of Santa Clara Office of Supportive Housing offered the following services. First, temporary shelter at any county partner shelters as well as new shelters established as a result of COVID-19, all abiding by social distancing and taking necessary precautions. Motel placement for high-risk individuals determined through a screening conducted by a nurse. Resources for showers, including locations and access instructions. Employment assistance programs. Substance abuse treatment, including residential support. Mental health support. And finally, housing assistance programs, such as the Emergency Assistance Network, which can aid in move-in costs, such as deposit and first month's rent. On November 19, 2020, the Cupertino City Council allocated $200,000 in funding to support a pathway to housing for those experiencing homelessness at the encampment on Wolf Road. Members of the encampment were offered shelter in a motel and storage for personal items for up to six months. Abode services made available units at an existing service delivery location in a motel setting. Each member in the motel has access to case management and supportive housing services for help with permanent housing options, employment assistance, substance dependencies, and more. Truly, this is a multifaceted problem, and we have started to take the correct approach, a very thoughtful and multi-tiered approach. Additionally, the city established a temporary alternate outdoor site for the encampment members to relocate during the COVID-19 shelter-in-place orders. Portable restrooms, hand washing stations, and debris bins have been provided on site in line with CDC and local public health guidelines. This couldn't have been possible without the assistance of our dedicated public works team. I wanna thank Director Roger Lee for his and his team's exemplary efforts throughout the entirety of this pandemic. The County of Santa Clara and Abode Services will continue to coordinate outreach and engagement services prioritizing a pathway to housing for each remaining individual. City Manager Deb Fung's indefatigable efforts were the driving force behind Cupertino being able to respond so well here. In extending the notion of gratitude and opportunity 
which I would like to make a theme for my second year as mayor this year. We are grateful for the opportunity to help others. And as we meet these challenges, we are more grateful for the future opportunities we have to make things better for everyone, ourselves included, when we put forward our resources honestly and with compassion. I am proud to represent a city that cares for its most vulnerable residents. As we're also all too aware in these times, local businesses are as well vulnerable to the effects of the pandemic. We are moving forward with grateful mindset geared towards solutions and expanding opportunities there as well. Cupertino successfully launched a small business emergency relief grant program utilizing our CARES Act funding allocation of $229,000. This provided grants to eligible businesses with 25 or fewer employees that include low moderate income individuals. Best of all, these grants do not need to be repaid. Cupertino provided 5,000 grants, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, $5,000 grants to 37 local small businesses to assist the recovery of Cupertino's business community. Hopefully we can uh, up that number, uh, perhaps not to, to 5,000 grants, but um, you know, hopefully it can increase to the point where our businesses can truly see a successful economic recovery. The city has also moved forward with other initiatives. First, to date, the city has distributed 50,000 masks to businesses for their workers and customers. Second, We've also temporarily waived permit fees for temporary sign permits to our local businesses' advertising efforts. And third, we've developed a streamlined permit process for outdoor business operations, including dining and outdoor retail and personal services uses when allowed under stay-at-home orders. We have also established a COVID-19 business information webpage to serve as a centralized resource of information for businesses. You can find that at cupertino.org forward slash COVID-19 business info. If you would like to help support our local economy, please visit cupertino.org forward slash open for business to find a list of businesses that remain open during the shelter in place orders. In addition, I'm happy to report that we are looking into the creation of an online city store. There, you will find city-branded apparel, accessories, and more. More information to come on that. Together with our Economic Development Division and Communications Office, expect great opportunities in the upcoming year to proudly sport the Cupertino name on gear and gifts for your family, friends, sister city connections, and beyond. Another item I'd like to highlight is the potential re-examining of our city seal, also known as the city logo or the Morion logo. Currently, it features that Morion, a high-crested helmet worn by Spanish conquistadors. Our local historians tell us that this is actually not something that is likely to be historically accurate with respect to our local history, as it is unlikely that this helmet was worn by the Spanish explorers first arriving to our area in the 1700s. And given the social awareness of our times, it may well also be a good moment to consider replacing it with a symbol that more closely aligns and reflects with our community and values, and does not, from the perspective of some at least, indicate a celebration or endorsement of colonialism. I would like to thank the Parks and Recreation Department for their outreach efforts keeping the Cupertino community engaged during the pandemic. This includes Parks and Recreation Director Joanne Magrini. Welcome to the community. Many of you have not met her yet as she was hired months into the pandemic. Through her and her department's hard work and dedication, we have been able to continue to offer programs, camps, and events in virtual and socially distanced platforms. We as a city have had to adjust, as everyone has, to ever-changing conditions. Recreation classes and camps were converted to be available online to allow residents a mental 
and physical outlet, social activities for our seniors were adapted to provide them with a safe way to interact, and all resources were utilized to, being, uh, to bring opportunities to our residents to maintain a sense of community. Shortly after the community was asked to shelter in place, the department adapted quickly, working with staff and vendors to create a virtual recreation page hosted on the city's website to offer classes and programs where the community could participate in programs and offerings they are used to enjoying. The virtual recreation page had a wide response and was welcomed by community members looking for a way to stay active while at home. During the summer season, efforts were contributed to allow for summer camps to continue both in person and virtually. Staff, participants, and their families were happy to have an opportunity to learn, grow, and be active. With the community unable to visit city facilities, staff looked for opportunities to engage and support residents in need. The Senior Center initiated a meal delivery program to provide eligible seniors with meals from local restaurants. Senior Center members were also offered wellness calls where they would sign up for a periodic phone call from staff. In addition to providing creative, adapted programming through the year, the Parks and Recreation Department responded to local emergencies, preparing and helping to operate city facilities as cooling centers during the heat wave and evacuation centers during the wildfires. The department's efforts have not gone unnoticed. Their programs have been recognized multiple times by the, park, by the California Parks and Recreation, uh, rather the California Parks and Recreation Society, receiving their first five SNAPS award, and recreation coordinator Amanda Huey was recognized by the Cupertino Chamber, receiving their star award for her collaboration with Harker School, distributing cards to seniors. Another program that emerged during 2020 was Cupertino Cares. It has never been more important to remain connected with our families, neighbors, and community as we navigate this difficult time by staying at home. To help foster positive and healthy community connections, the city launched the Cupertino Cares Initiative. The city posts a fun activity for residents of all ages on its website and social media accounts each week. These activities have allowed our community to write, draw, dance, sing, and laugh together while at home. The, Cuper the Cupertino Cares Initiative also included a few giveaways, such as the incredibly popular Halloween buckets. The city, with many thanks to former Mayor Scharf, was able to give away 1,500 buckets to our community. With no in-person events possible, I'm so happy and grateful that the city used some of those funds to bring some joy to our residents. With regard to our city finances, let me start with the opportunity of a lesson learned. A couple of years ago, city staff uncovered a 17-year, $800,000 embezzlement scheme committed by a former employee. It was uncovered as part of the final phase of a new system implementation. Subsequent to the discovery, significant enhancements were made to the city's internal controls. Additional staffing was allocated to the finance division and the, and the city established an internal audit function for the first time. The discovery of the embezzlement occurred in my prior term as mayor in 2018, in fact. I made sure to sit down with our finance staff on a regular basis after that to go over all questions I had about every single city expenditure that the, that the mayor normally signs off on as part of an automatic process uh, during our consent calendars in our council meetings. But after that, I made sure that I scrutinized every single line of every expense uh, for the remainder of my, my term as mayor in 2018. And after much work between the public, council, and staff, we are doing well with regard to our internal checks and safety mechanisms financially. The case itself continues to experience delays due to COVID-19. While a trial setting is anticipated, a settlement could be accepted before. The city expects a positive conclusion and the ultimate return of embezzled funds. More information can be found on cupertino.org forward slash fraud. 
Administrative Services Director Christina Alfaro and her team have helped bring our city's finances to the point where our internal mechanisms meet the quality of the care that we and our predecessors have used in stewarding the city's finances. To me, part of gratitude and opportunity is that you lead with talking about what needs to be improved. And we have very much answered that call here. The truth of the matter is that Cupertino's finances have a long-standing history of being very responsibly and thoughtfully maintained as far as expenditures and allocations go. On the front of future oversight financially, the city hired the accounting firm Moss Adams as an internal auditor in 2020. Moss Adams has since completed its comprehensive risk assessment and has identified areas of higher risk, challenges facing the city and region, as well as areas for operational efficiency enhancements. The audit committee will be making a recommendation to city council on an internal audit work program before the end of the fiscal year. For those interested in understanding our budget on a deeper level, the city utilizes OpenGov's transparency portal where viewers can view and sift through all of the city's financial data in real time for 10 years of finances. Residents can also take advantage of an interactive tax calculator that was rolled out this past year. This new tool allows a resident to estimate the amount of sales and property taxes they contribute to the city each year and how those contributions are spent. It's a great calculator. And to learn more, visit cupertino.org forward slash finance. On August 18th, 2020, the city council approved the redevelopment of the Oaks Shopping Center. This project named Westport Cupertino is an important step toward meeting the city's housing goals by providing 267 housing units. This mixed use development at an important gateway to the city addresses the following housing needs in the community. Its 88 townhome and row house units will provide much needed ownership housing, which fulfills the city's vision to provide home ownership opportunities at a full range of densities. As many senior residents face a unique set of housing needs, including physical limitations, fixed incomes, and health care costs. Having a project that includes age-restricted housing, specifically 227 units, of which 48 are affordable to low and very low-income seniors, is a step into the right direction. The, also consider the fact that in a lot of our city, aging in place is a phenomenon that's real. And so with regard to being able to open up the inventory of housing that can free up other housing uh, for families and bring in more students, this is a critically important step that we need to take. The city took all of this into consideration by the guarantee of affordable housing. Further, consistent with city standards, there's equity among the affordable and market rate senior units in the unit sizes, type, and accessibility to transit family, health care, and other services, particularly with its close access to the city's senior center. Throughout the entitlement process, the city worked closely with the applicant to ensure that this project was successful while simultaneously meeting the concerns reflected by the public. The city conducted a thorough environmental impact review, adding mitigation measures that would reduce impacts to the community during the construction process. The city was also successful in working with the developer in facilitating a pedestrian and bicycle easement on the western edge of the project site. This is an important connector between Mary Avenue and Stevens Creek Boulevard. On the staff side, this was overseen by the Community Development Department. And I want to thank Director Ben Fu and his team for their excellent work. Our council continues to work with the Community Development Department and I'm grateful for the opportunity to work with staff and help to translate the sentiments of our community into honest policy that gets details right and that considers downstream effects. There are baseline common best practices, and I truly believe that a great strength of our community is our collective and historical support of finding what those are and implementing them. 
A couple of uh, updates on our processes deserve mention here. First, I want to mention that Vice Mayor Chow and I worked very well with staff this past year on making sure that our outreach to the community through our commissions is done well and with an optimized procedure, which now aligns commission work with our council work plan and allows for good exchange of information among the public, the commissions, and staff. Second, our public processes and our ability to deliver and adapt to the very different conditions affecting meetings have also changed and improved. When Kirsten Squarsha was promoted to city clerk this last year, she helped to ensure that our city municipal code was followed and updated where needed. Our minutes are in good order, we are no longer following half century old procedures, and we have adapted to modern video conferencing conditions seamlessly but with much work behind the scenes. Kudos to the city clerk's office for its role in our success here. And I also want to thank our city's video staff for their seamless integration of videography and video conferencing into our city meetings. We have never had um, a swearing in ceremony, for instance, uh, by, by video conferencing, and it really went quite seamlessly. So thank you very much for that. I also want to thank our city's communications officer Brian Babcock for helping to ensure that our community is interconnected with the media in a positive manner. Brian manages and produces the scene. As a community, it is, it is absolutely true that we are quite unique and quite diverse and uniquely diverse. Brian's job in reaching out to the rest of the world and reflecting our perspective and contributions is one that is ever evolving. And as we look at how we are reflected in the public sphere, I see a lot of positive trends. Publication is both challenging and filled with opportunities these days as widespread availability of methods to communicate, expand, and to more people. Council and I look forward to working with staff and the community to bring forth the strengths of our community while interacting in a positive and effective fashion. As we emerge from the pandemic, we also have two great city projects that give us an opportunity to proceed in ways that help promote community cohesion and equity. The library expansion is underway and will add two floors of wonderful and much needed space to the Cupertino Library. Our city council working together with our staff and members of the community represented by our library commission, the Cupertino Library Foundation and committed volunteers has managed to provide us a jewel box of a space for a much treasured resource. I wanna thank the Library Foundation as well for their tireless advocacy on behalf of this project, as well as for the willingness to work with me this year on a particular environmentally related initiative of mine as mayor to help us and particularly our students think about what we do with plastic waste. There are a lot of hopeful avenues here, none in my opinion more hopeful than what can happen if we work with promoting awareness and encouraging creativity and initiative among our emerging generation. I was very happy also to provide the county library system a proclamation for their excellent efforts in restoring services during the pandemic in a safe manner. And special thanks with regard to the library expansion program goes to our assistant city manager, Diane Thompson, for her excellent work in pulling this project together. Our residents can continue to enjoy literature, educational opportunities, art, and music with something to look forward to as the full facilities open and we emerge from this pandemic. I also want to highlight accessibility and equity here in the context of creating other amenity space in our community. This has also been a priority of mine during my six years prior to this year on our council and my seven years prior to that serving on our Parks and Recreation Commission. The amenity space I'm referencing with respect to equity is on our eastern border, on a parcel of land that borders Lawrence Expressway. After even more years than I've been working on the project, with good help from Supervisor Joe Simidian and his staff on the county board, I am so very pleased to report that we have purchased the seven acres of space for stewardship into parkland related activities under the city of Cupertino. The precise configuration and usage has yet to be determined and will be subject to outreach and input from our community. 
I'm particularly happy about this because that area of Cupertino is heavily park deficient, having been annexed from the county in the 1990s, at a time before which development of neighborhood park space was simply not a topic covered by unincorporated county activities, where the parks were more on the order of large regional spaces such as Stevens Canyon County Park. This marks a wonderful collaboration and an example of how great opportunity has risen from long-standing perseverance. And well done to Heather Minner of Shoot Mahali, the premium law firm that currently sits in the position of our city attorney's office. This was time well spent finalizing this contract. And thank you all, our residents and stakeholders, for the support on helping make the entirety of our community more accessible to both outdoor healthy recreational spaces and spaces like the library, where we keep envisioning and following through on spaces that create amenities that deliver good value for our residents, taxpayers, and the general public. I know that one of the major topics in our society at large has been about racial equity. And I've alluded a bit to it earlier when I mentioned looking at the symbology of our city seal, our city logo, the Morion. Let me share some final brief and basic thoughts on this. My hope, and I believe that this represents the sentiment of our council and community, is that we can have honest and effective conversations about our perspectives without the posturing and with compassion. Ultimately, that, in addition to getting our work done, is what provides real solutions to problems. In many ways, we're at the crossroads now, and we need to keep pulling together as we have done in many ways before. I hope that the several exemplars of today's Cupertino that I've provided here have helped to demonstrate our commitment in the fashion of the collective whole of our community that is so much more than the sum of our parts to honesty, fairness, attention to important details, pragmatism, and the resultant and thoroughly ingrained quality that emerges from this very multifaceted effort that requires and inspires and is inspired by so very many people. From Monta Vista to Rancho Rinconada, from Seven Springs to Homestead Villa, from public works to recreation and community services, from IT to finance, from the city manager's office to planning, from our environmental and sustainability efforts to our senior center outreach, from our teen commission to public safety commission, fine arts, spike and ped, library, audit, technology, information and communication, and everything in between, the state of Cupertino is one founded upon and continued with gratitude. We are grateful for our residents. We are grateful for our staff and stakeholders. And we see the opportunities from that foundation when we stay consistent with principles that we cherish and that we seek to preserve. Thank you for everything that you do. And thank you for helping make the city of Cupertino what it is and will be. I am grateful to you and I wish you safety and good health as we continue on this opportunity-filled journey together. Thank you very much and have a good evening.